to where C9 nearly killed the mid lane turret. It just took, yeah. you know, seven seconds of solo time afterwards to knock it down. And there were elements, but it just wasn't quite enough. So here we go into what could be the final game of the series. C9, we know they can bounce back, but they've lost two in a row already. You have to wonder what the adaptations, if any, are going to be here for C9. Do they have the confidence to go back to something like Zach? Yeah, and there's so much they can do here, right? They don't need to necessarily ban Vladimir if they wanted the first picket. I would love to see them take Jin away from yeah. Double Lift. Also, people are talking about separating the Cassiopeia and the Rek'Sai because that's given a lot of mid lane control to Bjergsen and Svenskir in this whole game. There are a lot of things C9 could do. I'm just not sure what they're going to do. Well, the pressure's on, of course. TS7 have been willing to take Jin very early on in the draft. They've picked it roughly as their second champion every time so far this series. Maybe it comes in one more time. Never are these teams allowed to play Gangplank. Never is TSM allowed to play Karma or Sivir. Those bands haven't really gone anywhere. And I'm very surprised that Bjergsen has been able to play Cassiopeia blind into Jensen multiple times and not been meaningfully punished. Jensen should be able to crush a lot of people given the counter pick or even get advantages, but it's been Bjergsen actually carrying a lot of these team fights. And they just give up trying to counter pick it. They ban it. And there it is, the Cassiopeia ban that may lead to the first pick of Vladimir. I know you've been mentioning several times, Jad, the scene, and have not shown a propensity to playing the champion. So with TSM banning it, it makes you feel like TSM knows they do, or at least thinks they do. But they're taking a long time in this last ban. What's it going to be? Do you remove that option one more time? What are the first pick options? And it's Tom Kench, so it could be the trade. Hey, if you take Nar, we take Vladimir, or you take Vladimir, we take Nar, and those are both champions that have been very key throughout the playoffs. So. Now it's time to find out how much priority does C9 really put on that Vladimir? Vladimir, Jin, Rek'Sai, I feel like those three champs are Nar. grabbed well. And Nar's actually the fourth, which yeah. is a little bit helpful to C9 that now you've got four really important yeah. champions that you get some back on the blue side, but where they go is honestly up to entirely the team's priority because any one of those four could be a first pick. It's also very scary, you know, Rek'Sai, we're talking about the importance of Rek'Sai, get me some Rek'Sai on the analyst desk, but if you first pick Rek'Sai, you give away Nar and Vladimir for the solo lanes, that's a scary world to live in. So it's a tough choice to make and they're gonna make it. Rek'Sai gets first pick, we'll see what their sponsor will be. Willing to go into that scary world. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I do actually wonder if TSM will lock in both their solo lanes too early because that just has exactly the type of team composition they'd want to play. I actually think they could do something like Vladimir Genie. Certainly. It, it really depends on what you think the priorities actually are because when C9 was in this exact situation with the first pick Rek'Sai, they went for uh, Nar and Trundle. They thought Trundle was still a really important early pick support. They've continued to pick it early on for themselves, always in their second uh, to third champion really here. And the question is, does TSM feel in a similar way? The Jin, I think, does likely go away. It's been good for Doublelift so far. Vladimir alongside it can make sense. Actually, they think the Trundle is wow. as important wow. as C9 said it was. That was a sort of worthy early pick. The Vladimir does come through, which now makes us think, is it just going to be Jin and Nar? Smoothie's Trundle has been spectacular throughout the series, and there is a Tom Kench ban, so I can see why they do it. But with all those other pet picks that are up, I'm actually very surprised to see that, because now Nar and Jin could go through to C9, and that's a power composition for them. Plus, it's not like there's a board pool falls off that much. Bard is available here. Smoothie's great on that. Tarek is available here. Smoothie's great on that. Nosey would be playing into a melee matchup. He doesn't have to take it here. I know. Those options are on the team. It's the weird thing where sitting here, we're like, we don't quite understand why Trundle's yeah. so highly prized. But both Must these teams thing. are telling us that Trundle is this important that you need to pick it by your second or third champ, or it goes away and you don't get the chance here. But yes, that does mean the champs we've seen do well. The Nar and the Jin are the current hovers. And those are going to be locked in here in Toronto. Sneaky getting his first crack at the champion here. We'll see if he can perform, if he can take over as he has been known to do on this champion. It's definitely one of his signature 80 carries. Yeah, expect him to try and do a lot of stuff in the lane. They still have the ability to see a little bit more of TSM's composition before they pick their support. And I expect them to be going very aggressive now. I think you have to see it come in. And also, you can still see what 80 carries to go for. We know Ash is the common one, but Devilith has shown us great Lucian games. Ezreal is actually a common counter uh, elsewhere in the world, especially over in Asia. And he goes, oh yeah, it's my turn. I've got to pick this one. And actually, they're going to save AD carry for last. They're going to go Shen in the top lane, and they will put on the other side of the jungle matchup. The Gragas goes over. Making a bit of a change here, I think, is, is maybe needed in the top lane. We have seen Haunter struggle in that Echo. 
versus Gnar matchup. So he's going to go to the Shen. He's going to go more to the team play. And we'll see how they're going to be able to deal with that because I think that there's a lot of strong dive on TSM right now with the Shen, with the Vladimir, all the Gragas as well, just piling in on someone like a Jin. Yeah, and there's a couple of interesting situations here. I like what Gragas might do for this game, the Shen as well, because this seems like a setup for Malzahar mid. Normally, Tom Kent, I think, very good against Malzahar. You just you save whoever was going to be abducted by the Nether Grasp, and Malzahar has been the common counter pick to Vladimir when it wasn't Cassiopeia. We know Jensen plays the champion very well. It doesn't have to go that way, of course, but it's been common. And no, he's hovering Talia as the pickup here. Right. Wow. With the Braum support. We have seen an absence of Talia in this series, despite it having a lot of priority throughout the playoffs. I think because there's been so much damage in the mid lane, but. This means Jensen's going to be looking to be very mobile in this game and really try and play off having winning lanes to go and make some early game dives. C9 going to have to go all in with this composition. Talia is extremely high priority in a lot of other regions. You see in LPL, LMS, mm -hmm. it's picked all the time, every single game in some of those series. <laughs> I don't think we're going to get that one. <laughs> Would be cool, though. I mean, certainly there's plenty of support for him, but yeah. And you can see that TSM are waiting. They know they're going to go Gragas. They pretty much knew they were going to go Shen. They said, let's see what the rest of C9's comp actually is. How much pain is there? How explosive is the composition? They say, OK, the X Factor is Braum and Talia. Those are the new ones in. They've got engaged tools. OK, well, what does that mean for Double as champion? Do you want something more agile? They covered Lucian earlier, the Vayne, and Lucian does come through. So something a bit more self-sufficient, something a bit more agile comes in. We will break out of that ash Jin dichotomy. Double gets his pocket pick. Yeah, he really loves playing Lucian. He played it so much during the regular season, and it makes sense in this context. If he was playing Ash, he's a little bit more of a sitting duck if they do get in a situation where Talia is alting them from the mid lane while Sneaky's opening up with the curtain call. Now he can at least have a chance of surviving in those scenarios, and there's also the sneaky chance of him being a hyper carry since they do have the Shen to give him some giant shields like me. And you know how aggressive Double if likes to be. If you get going on the Lucian, you really do have the ability to bully these guys out, to smash a champion like Jin in those 1v1 side lane duels. And it's something that Sinky's going to have to be very careful about. But Jin and Braum is also a very powerful 2v2 kill lane. And you expect TSM to have some level of priority in the 2 on 2. I feel like Trundle's going to be good against any of these other tank supports. And Lucian, known as a lane bully. But as you get into mid game, it's really about how well you can play League of Legends. because. You're in the face of everyone else as Sneaky plays the Sniper. It's going to be a much shorter distance here for Double If. So this might be the last time these two coaches shake hands here this season as we might move on to this being the final game of the Summer LCS. TSM one Nexus away from taking the crown yet again. So show us your support for your favorite team, whether here in Toronto or online elsewhere. Hashtag lock in, show your swag, show me what your team spirit looks like. Whether you've painted your cat black and white or blue, <laughs> who knows what it is, don't let us that. see it. Yeah, do not paint your cat. Do not paint your cat, <laughs> just <laughs> disclaimer. I mean, I don't like cats, I'm down with that. They can be a tormented as much as they want. Oh my goodness, and there's also so much on the line here. It's the North American Championship, but as far as world's implications go, TSM has the difference between the first and second seed, and if C9 wins, they go as the first seed, versus if they lose, they have to win best of fives in the promotion tournament to make it through to there. So, really so much on the line for C9, having to win two games in a row now, if they want to keep that hope alive. Exactly. If C9 drops this, they play the winner of Envy vs. Liquid, and then Immortals waiting for them as the final boss. If they lose this, CLG fans hope TSM wins. TSM would bring CLG with them to Worlds if they mm -hmm. close this one out. So Jensen, last time he was up against Vladimir, did swap off the Ignite. This time he's going to stick with it, having that aggressive summoner into the Vladimir. We'll see if he can make use of it. See yeah. if he can right now. Players lining up across the map, and we've got ourselves a quick pause here. Happens. I hope the word quick is what we end up staying with. Yeah, indeed. Because I really want to see the way the early lanes play out in this. One of the big reasons Talia was such a pick and ban priority later on in the season and still in other regions is the insane power early on in the laning phase. Level one shove, level three shove, just being able to pressure raptors, get vision on the enemy jungler. Then when you hit level six, first you get to go and roam down into other lanes. And that's the type of stuff that Jensen would have to do. He will really need to kind of take over this game, I feel like, to, for C9 to have a chance. It's also so much about segmenting those team fights. Who in the later stages of the game can you cut off and isolate and create these advantageous, you know, 3v1s, these 5v3s, etc. in these team fights. It's a lot about 
how well you're going to be able to use that ultimate. Yeah, well, looking at the in-game situation here, Jensen had left the game, then reconnected. Looks like the ref is off his screen, and he's going to verify that he's okay to go. Don't know what the issue was, but he was able to buy Adams walk into mid. Had a quick game sound problem, but okay. should be good to go now. Well, it's a bunch of pirates. They all say R in all chat, and looks like we'll be ready to go here into this one. When they type R, it means ready. Yes. So, as much, there's no pirates in this game. Gameplank is banned. Misfortune is out of meta. True. True that. Look at all those. There are pirate themed skins for other champions, but no Katarina picked up in this one. And yeah, what an awesome audience you guys have been here today. We are back into action. Cloud9 versus TSM. The fifth time these two organizations have met in the North American LCS Finals. They've each won two crowns themselves in the head-to-head. -head. And here we go. TSM up two to one in games. One more, and they cement it. So much pressure on C9 here, especially Jensen. First finals going up against Bjergsen. The MVP has not had the kind of success that he's wanted so far. You know, on these last two Velkaz games, has been rendered pretty ineffective. We have a unique jungle start, by the way. Svenskar not being mm -hmm. leashed Krug, but being leashed his red buff is atypical. There's always like the really small chance it's like a level two gank out of nowhere. I have a red buff, body slam flash, but... Oh god, Jensen's actually pretty far up there. He actually might get a conversion on right now. Running up onto this one, trying to figure out where it's It's because they are. know the, the strat from Chalia. He's going to go pick the first camp. It's a flash wave, but that means body slam is easy. And Sven Skarin metagames the obvious Talia laning phase. It's the easy chase down. Nowhere to go. First blood to Bjergsen. We talked about this in Champion Select. The Talia shoves the first wave and goes and steals Raptors. And it's also dangerous to succumb to patterns. And that was a pattern that from minute one, TSM was ready to punish. This is what research gives you. Beautiful start there for TSM. Cloud9 obviously did not see it coming. The red buff start for Gragas and a looping around the brush. And they lose the blue buff right after that. And Jensen, completely unaware that this is happening, he has to know that he was dead as soon as oh. he flashed there. And just no chance, even able to give it over to Bjergsen, the level one Vladimir auto attacking him down. And this could be disastrous for Jensen. Talia needs the early lane shove to get pressure elsewhere, but if they can get one back right here, double it. Medios. Here comes Medios. Flash knock. Are they going to trigger the stun as well? Is it enough damage? Yes, it is. Sneaky crucially gets the kill. C9 battling back, making a play on the bot side. The critical wreck side coming up huge with a very good gank pass. And I can't emphasize that enough that that had to work. If they failed on their flash gank from Medios, and they were losing in the mid lane. The Talia pressure kind of has to snowball against the scaling of Vladimir, but it does work. They get the kill on the carry, and they're back in the game. It's made even more important by the fact that Svenskeren didn't have to use his flash to get that kill on Jensen. He can return to the mid lane. Jensen is very vulnerable for quite a few minutes still, and here is that bot lane. Once again, Medios sneaks in from behind. Full commitment, flash on Burrow. Doublelift cannot react. And this is another path that C9 was able to take that was probably a little bit distracted for TSM because the early gank went so well. But when Sven Skarin goes and gets that kill early in the mid lane, that means there's no way he's there for a counter gank that Meteos passed for a quick level three into the jungle and the dive. Both of those are level one strategies, but with the way they interacted, it means both junglers actually end up getting a kill. There's even more fun interactions there at a very high level mechanically. Even though Doublelift never flashed, I don't think he ever had the opportunity to, because as Medios yep. is coming in, he right-clicks on Doublelift. If at any point in time he's in range, instant unburrow. If Doublelift flashes, unburrow. If Doublelift doesn't flash, Medios flashes, unburrow. Either way, he's dead. Yeah, the only chance would have been to flash away early and try to hope that that gives you enough distance that Sneaky maybe doesn't flash after you and things like that. Right. But either way, he does have that summoner available for next time. That could be a very big deal here. Impact trading back and forth with Hanser. Uses a hop to trigger Hyper underneath the dodge zone. Gets the damage in. Impact so far looking good in a matchup that I feel like also is supposed to favor NAR laning phase wise. But Hanser went yeah. for the team matchup, not necessarily the lane one. It definitely does, and I think it gets worse over time once they have that frozen mallet. Even if you land a taunt on them, you start getting damage out, which is kind of your way to win, taunting them in mini form. Mm -hmm. You just get so much damage back on the way out because you're running out. He's just rocking his hyper over and over. It's very tough to deal with. Yep. Yeah, there's definitely an exit cost to taking a trade yeah. at concert, but, you know, as long as the entrance is good enough, it's still worth it in the long run. 
So far, it's just been very close. You're seeing the farm almost identical as that wave is right in front of his turret, and Impact takes the long walk back. And the most surprising place to see the identical farm is in the mid lane. Jensen died at level 2, burned his flash, and we were thinking the game could have fallen to complete disarray, but now he's sitting in full health, already been able to buy and get that lost chapter, and he's been able to keep the pressure on the lane early. He has been doing fine, but one of the critical things is once Bjergsen hits that Spirit Visage, hits those key e points, but Greepy can't get the bot lane. Doing it again. They can get it. The Burrow down the wall. They've got a slow and a Biofrost to tag him. Double straight flash and a dodge. He gets Here laid comes. from it. And now it's Biofrost running out of health, burning down, but he should survive Death Fire Touch. Fen's coming down, though. Okay, but it's still three alive, and, and there's no Trundle. I think there's no chance that gank works. He realizes that himself, drops the Trinket Ward, and goes into the jungle. And that's actually the last time they can go for that gank because Haunter's ultimate is up now on Shen. So if they do try an aggressive thing like that, it will be turned around at least until Impact gets his teleport back up. It's another reason Sven Scarin oh, is getting so aggressive in the jungle. You're kidding me. Shields it away. Ooh. Actual insanity right here. Sven has been playing so well this series for TSM. Yeah. He's been so aggressive, constantly winning these little smite fights, and they add up over time. It's so frustrating, and taking away that experience, taking away that gold, chip by chip by chip, is what edged him into a three-level lead last if, time. Exactly, and if you think about the choices that Meteos made, the over-aggressive dives, like it, it wouldn't be unreasonable to think that he's just getting tilted off this, where he's just losing everywhere, he's not getting the kills, he's not getting the farm, he's getting nothing. Their swag, bright colored pink ward gets killed off by Bjergsen, and yeah, tough stuff. Right now, though, 500 gold lead still does reside with TSM. They are winning by a little bit here as the top lane resets, and Impact hops out of attack range and walks away. And I think this top lane matchup is going to be super critical because a lot of times when you're on Talia, you'd want to actually gank that Shen, especially if Meteos can make it up that way. Because the more they can keep on to route, the safer their bottom lane will be. Dodge zone is down, Meganar used, and look at the low health bars here on a Hanser. Black is going to come in. That's enough damage. Go to the source of the global, and he's been shut down. Global domination by C9. And while Impact has been creating his own advantages elsewhere, this could be the game where the whole Cloud9 team starts piling up topside just so they can stop the Shen from impacting it and so they can get the most out of Talia and Rexa. And Hanser has no TP. Impact still has his TP, gets that kill, gets a good buy, and he can actually look to impact the rest of the map. Be too hard for him. You're seeing the dual lanes trade back and forth. A nice dodge and a snipe. And, and Biofrost realizes, okay, Smoothie's here. I can't go in for the auto attack. He kites away on this. Sneaky's Jin looking pretty good. He's got a kill and he's right now tying double lift and farm as they shove this wave into the turret. This should be a convenient recall if they need it. But right now, both AD carries are actually fairly poor. There won't be any recalls for a while. But the ultimates are unlocked. We see very frequently sometimes a Jin will hit level six, shove the wave, walk mid, and just go. Curtain call, burn a summoner spell. Mm -hmm. I saw similar patterns from Ash throughout the split, but it really does feel like C9 is very tethered to this bottom lane throughout this series. Sneaky yeah. and Smoothie done very small amounts of roaming. Especially against Lucian, there's going to be a lot of focus on trying to win this laning phase. He's going to land a couple of shots. Nice Rude on a Biofrost. One more hit would stun, but it's not enough. That Jin had to reload. Doublelift goes back in and knows there's no auto attacks to come in. Hits Smoothie several times for only one punch in return. And like bullets hurt more than punches. Jensen's looking. Uh, he is being pinged out here. We'll see if they can actually but get does control. It matter. Try to set something up. All five can show bot lane. Mutus is on the scuttle crab here. He could have weavered walls in. Chose not to. They're going to be okay. Nothing really diving into the bot lane right here. But C9 does hold lane priority down there. You have to wonder if some of those overdives, if some of the mistakes from last game are affecting their decision making a little bit. You know, does that get into your head as far as, hey, it didn't go well last time. Should we make the play this time? I think yep. it's almost impossible for it not to at least be in the back of your mind. You're yeah. trying to be in the moment and only think about this game, but they know the tendencies that have happened prior. Double lift. He's got no flash. Coming out. Here comes the damage. And even Biofrost could die. There's no snow. A oh. summoners up. And two jukes. Crucial for Biofrost. Those could have killed him. Such a clutch move back and forth. Such little wiggle room between the wall there. And he somehow manages to dodge those two shots. Really big for TSM to not fall behind in that dual lane to keep the Jin down and it's just really well played there by Biofrost playing at home in Canada. Quick slow on a Spence but he's able to kill the pink ward out. C9 can only sweep and be sad that their kill wasn't worth as much. Two to one so far, C9 making this game close. But no advantages really. And I have to give credit to Sven Scarin for out farming a Tiamat Rek'Sai. Like that is the thing that almost always out farms when you're playing this jungle matchup. But Sven Scarin has the level advantage. 
He's been out farming Meteos for most of the series, actually, and this game is no different. And we talk about Meteos as a player. We saw his Zac just last game. He's been known as an incredibly good hard farmer. He's one of the few people that actually sort of pioneered the play style. He always had more gold and more experience than his opponents. This series, not the case. Meteos has found himself to assist, though. And in the playoffs as a whole, he has actually really kind of reinvented himself a bit and going more for a very heavy ganking style in the quarterfinals against Envy and in the semifinals as well. He was seen much more heavily ganking and TSM make a move towards Dragon. Jensen cheating down to the side. Yeah, no one on C9 is even close to this. Something that has been pointed out as a weakness for them. They have very poor first rate control. TSM has very good first rate control. But now the question will be, they get the global call out that that just happened. Meteos immediately moves into Raptors. C9 has been playing a little bit around the top side. If there was a time to set up a play and try and kill Hauntzer, it would be after flash. that break. Attempt for the all-in right there. Ghost use flash on the other side. Jensen won't find enough here. This has to recall away. He was able to clear the wave first. We won't lose too much, but Jerks is starting to push Jensen out of lane. Yeah, and it's going to be super difficult for Jensen to even assist in that gank because of the pressure that Bjergsen has in that mid lane. Spirit Visage already completed. Jensen would love to get in the Abyssal Scepter, but he just it's going to be very delayed for him to hit that power spike. And Sven is actually camping out around mid lane here. They want Jensen to walk back into a Body Slam Flash, into the Gragas ultimate. Nobody yeah. he's calling it off. He's saying it's a little bit too slow. It would have been tricky. There's no ultimate on Bjergsen, but because the Flash has burned, that was an opportunity. <laughs> and Meteos drives end. by. He should have known. Okay, he gets the smite that time around. Sven's going to jump over the wall. There was actually one Tremor Sense that should have let him know that Sven was around. He's going to be able to slink away. No counter jungling gain. Impact actually took several turret shots. A great taunt by Hauntzer. But look at the turret's HP. He's chipping this out quite well. It's down to around half health or less. And the Impact is, is using his advantage to work on that turret. He's trying to get that first turret down for the team. It's at a third health already. Yeah, first turret's going to be huge in this game, and by far that turret is the most chipped down of all of them. The next gank that works would still give a first turret before this one, but if it's a steady state game, I expect that top turret to go down. Let's see if the steady state can happen, and C9 with the flash. There's the body slam and a flash, and the knockback doesn't quite get him far enough, but it's still going to be enough damage. A nice pickup once again, Bjergsen 2 and 0. And they still would have had the assistance of Haunts or Stand United if that didn't go well. So Jensen up a little bit too far and it gets instantly punished by TSM. And that's the benefit up. of forcing that flash out earlier from Bjergsen. He's carving out his advantages and he's having his team help him out to collect on that. A bit more damage on the bot side. And once again, Deadly Flourish will be anything but actually. Just a miss over the shoulder. Quick dodge there. Double swing his best. Neo impression. He's going to be fine. Those bullets aren't going to hit. The Meteos is coming in. Does not get seen by that pink war just barely. But the wolf spirit cool, does. It pings, lets him know. TSM have to say, okay, as long as we have Shen, we're okay. However, Hanser is low on health. Him joining is not going to be easy as Impact hops away from one and there's no flash for the other. They see Gragas. That means they might try to dive. And here comes the attempt. There's the jump on in. A lot of knockups. And here comes the Hanser ulti. One more shot. Won't quite get the kill. And now Meteos is in danger. Can he get out? No, he didn't have the tunnel. And just like that, Haunts are pressing R, turns the whole fight around. You gotta consider that C9 somehow misjudged that entire situation. Unless they can burst out over the Shen ultimate, it's not gonna be a good time because they can't match it fast enough with Haunter's teleport, but they still want to persist because they really want that first turret goal. But Bjergsen is coming down, he has his ghost, he has his ultimate, they need to be careful about this. Julia is nowhere to be seen just right now. I gotta figure out where she actually is. Actually part of the team, there we go. I, hiding under smoothie. Hiding in plain sight. Yeah, I just, I was like, where is he not in mid lane? He's not in the base. Where did he go? Oh, he's on the screen. It's because you expect him to be flying around on his ultimate, but he's been walking to all these locations. It's another thing of this series. C9 hasn't been able to use their global pressure spells to create global pressure. The Ash Arrow has been completely ineffective. Curtain Call the same, and no Talia alt yet, but we got to watch this again. And here's this dive once again, and Double Lift gets right behind Biofrost, and you have to think, maybe Vito should have just gone for Biofrost there, who already had the Braum passive on him. Had he proc that, they might have been able to at least get that support kill, but yeah. the Shen ulti there turns it around, and it's the TP used from Impact, which means Haunter has global advantage. His TP is still available. Yeah, and they really weren't that close to that kill. Now a 2-0 Bjergsen. 
him. He just got to be careful. And that's all. Wow, a big knock back by Svensker and into the engage. Hemo Plague is on. Good damage on the videos. Running out of health pretty rapidly. One more hit will do it. Does he have the reinforcements? Juke it as long as he can, but that will be a kill picked up. Bjergsen gets it. 3 0 now for him. A taunt lands for Hauntzer, but it will be Smoothie able to get away. Slinking out with his life, but now 4 to 2 kills advantage for TSM. Cloud9 about to knock down top tier, I think, though. I don't think there was any way that that was going to work for C9. They just are not even close to having enough damage to kill off Bjergsen, who has a giant spelt and a spirit visage. And this is Jensen, who's quite a bit behind. There's just no way that was going to happen. They're overforcing it. It feels like the nerves are, are getting the best of C9. Yeah, it happened a little bit in that last game after the first Zack Dash didn't go the right way. They just pressed a little bit too hard. And now, why are you walking into a 2-0 tanky Vladimir that you have no chance of killing? It's backfiring, and it means first turret goes to TSN. And it's solo gold on the double lift Lucian. He's going to get a huge ejection of gold. 650 going his way is really going to try to put him ahead of the Sneaky. First turret had gone to C9 oh. in the top lane, but yeah. it's still turret gold going to TSM nonetheless. Making it close, though. You can see 1,100 separating these teams. Not a huge margin. Either one could win this one. Biofrost taking a couple of shots. Slinks away. It feels similar to the story of last game, where a lot of the hope is just on impact here, but Smoothie getting aggressive on. Big calling in. Oh, nice job there. The shield comes in in time. Svenskeren could not knock him back. And now another curtain pillar. call. Great pillar. Good job by Biofrost. Saves Svenskeren's life. Classy play there, just knows exactly what to do in the situation. No yep. need to make it a close call. Oh, Impact going for the wraparound here. Bro, Wants to be able to run long down long. Hauntzer. Yeah, there is no turret, and he's up about 20 farm right here, level 11. Here's Talia. Each. Talia doesn't quite cut off a ton, but now he's going to knock Hauntzer back into the little pebbles. Impact's got the other the side ish. They Flash have to kill him chase, fast. The knock up, Bjergsen's a lot of here. damage coming through. Bjergsen's in. And it's not enough damage to kill off Hauntzer. Now the chain slow on a Vladimir. Not Dios. exactly easy for him either. Pools away, does a bit of damage for the Javelin. Now Javelin Boomerang's gonna land, and that is a flash out from both solo and as a TSM. Yeah, really good job by Impact, creating advantages for his team once again. This guy has been incredible in the playoffs and is really the best chance for C9 to win this game right now. It's only down 800. C9 absolutely have the chance to turn this into a game five. Moving away the mid lane. The rock carpet comes down, clears the waves. He's gonna have priority. And now it's really important that C9 can go for this Infernal Drake while Bjergsen doesn't have his ultimate on the Vladimir. It's going to be a little bit tricky because they don't necessarily have the vision control, but as they're already having to deal with the Super Fred Vladimir, yeah. being down one Infernal Drake, you can almost not imagine going down two and still thinking there's a high percentage chance of a win. Now C9 do have priority on top lane. They shove the wave pretty far in. Haunter's answering now, and Impact will recall to join this fight as fast as he can. A lot of attack damage on him. Double Thorns Blade. Ninja Tabby in there as well, and we'll see what the play ends up being. Here comes Double if going for the chase. Sneaky's got to be careful. Juki left right, but that's going to put him in range of a pillar. Where does he even go from here? Shadow coming across. One more hit will do it. He's ticking down, and Double if one it. dash will kill him. He comes in under the turret and gets that kill picked up. Bad news bears for C9's bot lane. They're down one. Meteos also caught out. It's going from bad to worse. They're going to lose two. TSM up now six to two in kills. And C9 still trying to fight, but it's a 3v5. They can't really get much. And ooh, clutch the shield came in in time. That knockback could have been worse. We talked about the dueling prowess of Lucian in these 1v1s and double if flexing those muscles. Pops the Ghost Blade, goes right in for that 1v1 kill. And it could very well set up the Drake for TSM. It's 10 seconds until Meteos could tunnel back. It's not necessarily over yet because they did burn a lot. There's no Jin that would be able to join this, but. We know C9 has been pressing for stuff in the past. They at least get a flash out of double lift. But now it's only the chance at a miracle steal. It's very unlikely. And there it goes. A good smite by Svensker and double Infernal Drake for TSM. With the 2,000 gold lead, they are set up for success here to make it three games in a row. And here it is again. Double lift, full confidence, going straight in and sneaky. And sneaky, he needed to run straight down. He did not see Biofrost there. Gets caught by the pillar. I think had he just run in a straight line, he could have flashed away and lived. Exactly. I feel like he was trying to trying move to get to towards the, the rest of his team. But that also means he's running towards the rest of Double Lift's team because that's where everyone was, and the Trundle had a larger impact than Sneaky's teammates. The biggest story of this game, though, 4-0 on Bjergsen. This guy is going to be an absolute monster. They are going to have so much trouble ever killing off Vladimir in the team fights. And Jensen is 0-2. He's down in CS, and the four kills on Bjergsen, uh, it's going to be tough. And the draft makes this worse as well, right? Because when they were able to beat Vladimir in the first game, 
it was with Cassiopeia and Ash, who had very yeah. high sustained damage. But Talia is more of a global pressure champion that doesn't have crazy sustained damage. Like, he's not going to be able to cut through Bjergsen, especially without even the Abyssal Scepter being completed while being behind as well as not having the right champion matchup. The kills could not be more well distributed having four on Bjergsen because he looks like he will be unstoppable in this match. Yeah, I don't see who's going to actually kill him off in this fight. He's not going to get low enough for a, a sneaky fourth shot to actually pick him off. It's difficult road for C9. They have to somehow break this game apart and it's going to be very, very difficult. Yes, Impact still winning his matchup. That's nice for him, but the levels are tied. The farm's not completely miserable. TSM is still shown. They're willing to pull the trigger pretty frequently. State United available. No teleport for Impact. Means the chance that a power play is here. So Impact is actually in battle with Haunted and Brent. That State United from even happening. Lands more stuns. Lands more CC. He's got a very low health turret waiting as his prize. So C9 could tie up some of this. Drops the aggro. A few attacks will do it. And here comes Jensen. To Kind of cement that that even happens right there. Puts the wall down, looks for damage on Hauntzer, and actually, Shen's gonna have to respect this kind of damage output. Here comes Impact, and actually, they get the kill in the back line. The turret's still standing, but it's gonna be dropped shortly. As now mid lane under a bit of fire. I'm gonna land off a couple of minions. That turret did actually fall. I take that back, but there we go. There's the answer kill. TSM up 1500. That was a really nice play by C9. Being able to play around Impact, we wanted to see that maybe a little bit more before 21 minutes, but at least getting the kill out of the Talia ultimate with Impact's lane pressure. And now it's actually turning into a bit of a race. How much can C9 defend? Because there's actually no one to defend Impact's Gnar on that other turret. Yeah, and Impact is building a lot of damage. Normally on Gnar, he goes right in a tank after Mellop, but this time actually getting a lot of AD, getting good damage down. TSM rotates to the mid, and they're gonna knock this turret down, but really, it's the same timing that Impact has as bot lane tier two is going to fall, worth 800 gold to the 750 of the outer, and this game is still only 1300 apart. And this is actually very similar to the gold distribution we saw in the prior game, yeah. where Impact is getting a lot of solo turret gold, and TSM is distributing it more around the rest of the team. It's all going to come down to whether or not Impact gets sucks in, sucked into team fights before he can build tank stats, because he has the split push items, but he needs tank stats in order to team fight. And one thing going for Jensen, although he cannot compete with Bjergsen straight up at all, he can roam away from Bjergsen. He can avoid Bjergsen and try to use that ultimate, the Weaver's Wall, to join up with Impact and really punish Hauntzer in this already advantageous matchup. Right, it's a race of how many of these side advantages C9 can get before TSM can use a snowball Drakes and Barons together, because those things are on respawn timers but can't run away, and C9 are kind of showing they are unwilling or unable to win that five on five. Vladimir, one of the kings of team fighting, a 4 0 oh Vladimir, absolutely the emperor. Yeah, he's building so many resistances, so many, so much tank, tanky stats from Bjergsen. He's going for the Zonias. He already has a Spirit Visage, tons of HP from Rylize, and it's just so, so hard to bring this guy. Through. The difference in style is going to be the really big thing to watch for is who can make their style of game work better. Two minutes in the cloud, Drake. Not a bad one from TSM. Make the rotations happen. Maybe it lets Hauntzer run away from some of these impact and, and Jensen roams as time goes on. Yeah, and TSM has excelled and they can force the enemy team into making decisions that they're not ready to make. With two Infernal Drakes and the super strong Vladimir, the way they can pull Cloud9 towards them is to start controlling vision around Baron and ultimately make them check things unsafely. Most of TSM's advantage of this game have also come around picking C9 off before the fight. And that's where Cena has to be so careful because they don't necessarily have the tools to prevent this bait from working. They certainly have to be careful. They have picked up double blue trinket to help circumvent that a little bit, but there's a fight breaking out. Meteos. Right begins. Meteos, Guardian Angel in the front line, taking that of help, and he's gonna pop the GA. Svensker a bit low, but not low enough. Staying alive, flash that with his life, and Meteos still at the chase. And one more pillar, one more shot. Double up takes him down. Now into the back line. Haunts are jogging what he can, but impact is certainly scary. Flash for the chase, a snipe from Sneaky, and now Bjergsen getting chain CC. The pool is on cooldown. A few more hits will do it. The house comes down, and a shutdown is in. Double up to Super Super low. Very, very low. One more clock tower goes Whoa. in. The summoner heal keeps him alive. Biofrost runs away, but C9 lost three. TSM only lost two. Game just cheated up a little bit right there. C9 actually, even though Meteos got caught, had a pretty good collapse on that team fight and impacted a ton of work, as well as getting double if low. He gets a shutdown gold there, too. It's going to be even more gold in the pocket of impact. Oh 
But Maybe. Bjergsen is so big in these fights, and it took so many C9 members to catch him down. And here is Medios moving forward. He gets caught, ulted into the team. Yeah, and it's always Medios who has to be the first one to check. Smoothie right behind him, and essentially, the people who were checking were the first ones to die. It's more surprising that Sneaky was actually able to stay alive for a lot of that fight because that's where Bjergsen, I think, will have more focus in future team fights is getting on him because that curtain call did some insane damage. Just look how long it takes him to take down Bjergsen. He doesn't even have his pool available. This is both the soul laners wailing on that guy for so long, and Double Lift has the heal available. Look at this Just angle. Just barely oh. doesn't hit him. And he even got out of range of the other yeah, boulder toss, exactly. Move speed may have helped a little. For some reason, Nars boulders do pass through walls, but yeah. Double Lift respects it and heals to walk away. Throws them over the wall, Jet. Yeah, oh, my the goodness. toss. Just, you know, there's a couple of trees, no big deal. But a tight one. Drake spawns and still the 1200 gold lead, plus the double infernal break for combat stats. I mean, TSM are winning by more than the gold lead itself does suggest. Now they've got the out of combat movement speed and that's gonna help as well. Impact wearing a red buff has to wait for that timeout on the Haunter, but it means he can do even more damage to these turrets. You see, chasing Bjergsen out of his own lane. I mean, this is this is 1v2 impact, wow. and he's in control of it. Yeah, his gold is actually equal to Bjergsen's gold. 3 0 1 versus 5 1 2. It's very close. Actually, 200 gold ahead. Where's Talia going? For double lift. Okay, where the snipe's gonna go? Looking right now at Svensker and taking all the damage, but it will be, and he's hurt. Double lift at close to full health is gonna be fine. Ooh, good explosive cast, but forcing a flash into Jensen. Otherwise, everyone remains standing. That was a 4v3 that C9 was trying to force on a TSM, and it's actually Jensen that has to flash back defensively. They need to be better about creating opportunity if they're going to try to go for those 4v3 things, because even though Impact was hero-moding against two people, they actually lose the 4v3 as far as summoner spell trades go. Yeah. I think a lot of that did have to do with the fact that they actually couldn't section off double if they only got the tanks in there. Every bullet from the Jin ulti is hitting the Rando and Sven Skarin, who is so tanky this game, just picks up his GA. So it's going to be hard to kill him off. Medios just sitting on the team at itself. He knows he's a bit behind and has to go tank stats. And Unfortunately for Medios, he's actually having a very rough series here. Everything post game one, he's had a lot in the death column and not a lot to show for it in kills and assists. But, you know, another negative game for the C9 jungler. Yeah, and I think it's a combination of several factors. He's made a few old regressive mistakes, but also TSM's vision control has been very strong. And they are very focused around punishing people who are trying to achieve vision. More often than not, it's Medios who's having to be front and center in those pushes, and he's getting picked off a lot. It's him as well on the rec side having to check forward with the prey seekers look for the baron and he's the one who has to give up his life in a lot of these situations but one thing at least going for them is still that top lane although impact does not have the experience advantage they did last game he has a very very big gold advantage still and medios is, is even on levels with sense garen so although he is 0 and 4 he has kept relevant in that way it's not like the zap game where he fell behind <laughs> in kills and then fell massively behind in farm so we'll see what's next up for this one. I'm going to keep saying it, but it's important. Only 1,100, the gold. It, it is staying very, very close. I know it looks and feels like TSM are winning, and to be honest, they are, but it is certainly still close. This is a tight game. C9 can find the victories. A lot of them has to be through impact, and he's pushing towards bot lane inhibitor turret right now. And it may be close now, but one more big fight for TSM could mean Baron for them, and they're looking to start it up. Double pink wards there. Vision has been denied. Smoothie sees it. They could teleport on an impact, but he's in range of getting caught by Haunts or TSM's looking to peel away and at least force something. All right now they force Smoothie's flash to get away from the pillar. Nice job by Biofrost forcing that one out. Trace his own ultimate in to help soften the tank, and nothing is gained. Impact was able to save his teleport as well. He's still in the one-on-one -on, -one on this bottom side of the map, trying to whittle down to this turret and do more damage to Hauntzer. Yeah, they're just trying to buy time for impact. That inhibitor turret is still very healthy. C9 nice goes to mid lane, but TSM is on. Oh no, they're not. They're baiting they're the baiting. Baron. They wow. say, yeah, you're going to finish sure, but you have to run at us for Baron right now. They could have started, but they're also not necessarily waiting to cut them off too quickly. It's and a now Medios knows. safe check for Medios. And the waiver's wall as well. Yeah, C9 have a lot of tools to make sure they know what's going on. At this point, they can kind of see some of what's happening with TSM, they but now... Be careful, though. C9's kind of on the wrong side of the map here. They need some teleport wards. Pillar's going to land on Midos. He actually flashed the way. Didn't use his tunnel. It might have been on cooldown at this time. So yeah, C9 losing cooldown. some summoners, but C9 able to pick off the turret, which means the gold is now even. It's only the Drake buffs to show that TSM are doing well, and maybe some compositional work yeah. with a very, very big Vladimir. 
16% attack damage and ability power. Interestingly enough, there's not a huge amount of attack damage and ability power being built by TSM. Vladimir doesn't have a huge amount of AP. The build from Doublet doesn't have a giant amount of AD either, but the Baron Baits will be continuing. And this oh, time, Scooby has to check. Time, but he had a friend to jump to and not on CC to stop him out. A quick root. Bjergsen turns away. The thing they have to be so careful about, though, is Sven Skerrit. He can actually force these fights with the Flash, with the ultimate, and it's going to be up to Smoothie to block that ulti so he doesn't get knocked into the team. Here comes Double. He's on the chase. Nice play by Impact. Does the Mega Nar shove, kills the ward, runs fast as he can, and it's going to be okay. The boomerang slows it. Grundle. Okay, I hops out the scuttle. <laughs> oh. Pretty fortunate there. The wildlife even. Helping C9, C9 scuttle crab right there. <laughs> C9 scuttle crab. All planned, all planned. And it's C9. Risky play, didn't mean much. Of course, they had to run through the other scuttle crab, the TSM scuttle crab, that top one. Uh, as they pick it off. Yeah, I think C9 was actually just clearing out vision there and it's been yeah. aggro the Baron. So yeah, it looked yeah. like they were starting it, but actually just intending to clear out those pink wards, which they Solar did breeze. accomplish. Just a prank. Yep, I, I got misled. My bad. Thank you, Azale, for correcting me on that one. It's only an accident that the Baron took damage there. So C9 resetting onto this one, getting what recalls they can, looking at everyone's current gold. Everyone on both teams is really bought recently. They're only at three digit gold right now. That's pretty standard here. TSM hoping to fight back for the vision control right now. Baron Dark for TSM. And even though this game is slowed down, we still have to think about the difficulties that C9 is going to have against Bjergsen's five kill Vladimir in team fights. I like what C9 is doing because it seems like they're more safely able to prolong the game in this game four than they have in prior games. And the more they can get these maneuvers around Baron, like the more times TSM tries to get Baron without it going wrong for C9, the higher C9's chances are of winning. What do you think about this Lord Dominic's pickup here for Seeky for going that healing debuff? I mean, so I think Mortal Reminder isn't necessary because Jensen's got Merlinomicon, but he's against these two both high health and high armor frontline tanks that gets the right off for him here. Bit of a base race here. Yeah, Z9 has to turn TSM back. TSM is ahead on this one, and Haunter can actually disrupt oh a lot. So TSM's much faster. This could be an end that C9 did not see coming. Already the inhibitor is open, and TSM are going for broke here. They can track Cloud9's progress. They know they took the inhib safe. They're able to walk away clean, and that is a huge, huge difference in gains. And it's another one of those prediction calls that plays on people's habits and tendencies. C9 wanted to go mid to bait Baron, and that puts them even further away from their own inhibitor. Impact just trying to bully down this turret. Right well, this now, the game is getting two. crazy. Yeah, Biofrost getting hit, dodges the snipe. Deadly Flourish not going to land there from Sneaky. He's and been so good about those little side steps. Yeah. Constantly dodging out those Gen CCs. And this is a rookie. This is. If we're talking about nerves getting to players, Biofrost seems the least affected of all players in his rookie split. And he said, I hope I don't tilt in the finals. Guess what? He's not. TSM goes for Baron. And with pretty perfect play from Biofrost, it's there. Bjergsen on the side. Inking Baron Nasher. Yeah, waiting puts up for the, the collapse. They hit Biofrost. They, they got, got him. him. That's one kill so far. Bjergsen still waiting for someone to jump in a little bit too far. But now they see where he's there. The curtain call comes in. And the bot lane, uh, a turret fell down somewhere. I think for mid turret. Mid, mid turret. went down. Mid tier two went down to minion waves. Yeah, bot's still alive for now. And now you wonder if C9 is going to try and section these guys off. They're a supportless team. They do have the has to And he's coming Weaver's in. Wall still up. They can completely cut them off. Here comes the play. Medius says Guardian Angel finds the front line. The knockback comes in. Doublelift gets the ulti in. Here comes the battle. Smoothie has to cut back. Shield is on. Sven's going to lose his Guardian Angel as well. And here comes the revive from Medios. He's going to go down. Dearson down to half. Here comes the battle back. And Sven's going to lose his life. Both junglers now dead. 4v3, but Smoothie's injured. They've got to be careful. Doublelift to clean it up. Here comes the damage shot, but Smoothie's going to go down. Haunts are staying alive. It's up to impact. And down. And he's gonna use the Zonius. Now what's left for him? Jensen gets him! It's an ace for Cloud9! Impact is a god in this series and this game. He is trying to soul carry C9 to game five. Who else but Impact with the incredible Gnar ultimate turning around a sure loss in that fight. Impact wanted to make it back to Worlds. And proving a 4-0 and 4 loss is not found here. And Watch what, that fight again. What's crazy about this is he had to teleport into the Baron pit because there were not close wards. This fight was so crazy. Multiple Guardian Angels, but just watch 
the patience in this fight. Bjergsen going away at low health, healing up so much. Doublelift on the outside. They're actually trying to go for Baron on the other side. They're going to get it. We can stay on this replay, I think, because we need to see. Sven is moving game. actually down yeah, for the Sven Baron. Sven might be going in. We, there's too much happening right now. Beautiful Nara. Let's get back to live. Going to watch the live one in the corner. Here comes the Kraken's attempt to steal, and it's going to go over. Oof. Medios gets redemption. He lands this fight. He at last wants more. So many buffs this game. So many camps have been scaring. And when it mattered most in game four, Medios lands the smite. They get the last hit there. And Cloud9 are in the driver's seat to tie up the series. And that's where keeping the experience matters so much. If you're three levels down at that point, maybe the smite goes the other way. But Medios has stayed relevant. TSM, though, trying to get something back. They want the dragon. Looking for this Ocean Drake, but Meteos has Smite. Oh, oh he's a bit late on the play. He's a bit late on the play, can't get it in time. And TSM, they get their fourth consecutive Drake buff this game. C9 are wearing Baron for a few minutes. They can make some heavy strides. Keep in mind, bot lane inhibitor turret has like 10% HP. Yeah, and they also need to let their inhibitor respawn if you're C9. It's a bit of a natural reset for the game right now. TSM picked up their fourth Drake. C9 has Baron, but it's from the back foot. We know how powerful Impact is in teamfights, and we know they can win teamfights. It just might not be favored against the Vladimir. C9 need to continue to play clean and build on the momentum from that insane ace. One thing to remember, though, Shen really struggles to actually wave clear at this point in the game. And against that Baron buff minions and the Gnar, Gnar can potentially bully him in and force down one of these inhibitor turrets. Impact is up over 3,000 gold on Hauntzer right now, and he can look to try to make some big advantages happen in the side lanes. Lots of money on several players as well. Recall's gonna be coming in shortly, but it gets weird, the timing. This is the kind of state of the game where 200 gold means I can finish an IE or I set on BF Sword because the slots are full up. Sometimes these breakpoints mean massive things that you don't see on the gold lead, but show up in that bottom scoreboard. Every once in a while, it means a whole lot. Sneaky right now, playing the wave clear duties. You can see Lord Dominic is in, Static Shiv as well. Uh, I think actually, I haven't done the math, I meant to after the third place series, but basically you have so much raw attack damage from the flat armor pen, from going Yomus and going for the, uh, the next armor pen item afterwards, that you start just wanting the multipliers that attack speed and crit actually give you on Jin. And mm -hmm. uh, I know several of these high tier teams, they have analysts that just do build math for them, runes, masteries, items, and these guys have told them, you should go for a zeal item third, fourth. It's interesting to see the shiv over the rapid fire, which is the traditional kind of zeal item there for Jin. People yeah. really prioritize getting that long range fourth shot off and yeah. can be massive at times, but C9 grouped up here feeling strong, feeling like they can take a 5v5 at this point in the game. One minute left on Baron. Absolutely, and that'll be the question of whether or not Impact can get the split push up with the Baron at this juncture because the danger for C9 is the TSM actually try and pull off an initiation. Sven Skarin's got a flash up, and if they can catch them in a fight where Impact would be late to arrive, they yeah. could take control of this game back, but as of now, it's a split push that they're going to have trouble answering. Yeah, Bjergsen actually hanging around the mid lane there, too. Was looking to see if Jensen would move too far gonna up. Going to get it. it. Wow. 5,000 gold lead now for Cloud9. Baron buff still on for one next minion wave. And this gold lead has to kind of battle against what Infernal Drakes will give you, but... C9 feels like they've got the advantage for sure. They do, but gold lead or not, TSM has an incredible team fight. And we know Bjergsen can take these over, but they're trying to set them off. Looking for the play. Svenskar can't join yet. Double gets hit once. Jukes around. Biofrost. Gonna take the last one, but still losing a fair bit of HP. Another that will turret. be another turret picked up. Baron buff is now timed out, though. So Here comes Sven. Might want to come in. Here comes the play. Bjerg in the back line. A great ulti by Smoothie to separate He's them. He's back in the ulti the He's got to stop, but he doesn't quite catch double lift. That man's okay on the Lucian. Carpet comes out. Bit of a knockback. They've got the two tanks here, and Meganar is over. It's now Impact more DPS champion. In goes Bjergsen. They've gotten away. Bjergsen can't get quite enough, though. And they trade back and forth. Hemoplague ends. C9 still alive, but they've got to limp out of this one. Root's gonna land on Biofrost. Once more, the engage and an impact. Also behind them. They're looking for the play. Up top, coming across. Puts the dodge zone in as well. Smoothie running out of HP. He's nearly dead. And Bjergsen gets one. The stun's not gonna land. He popped the Zonius. C9 running out of health. They've got to run away from this one. Impact is nearly dead. Gets the boulder toss, and they get out only losing one. They don't have enough damage to deal with Bjergsen. They have to back off. Such an intense fight there in the top lane. A matter of inches on either side. The game could have been decided. Ooh, that was a heavyweight bout right there. They no were just kidding. swinging for so long. Tanks all over the place in this game, and defensive builds give you fights like these.
Yeah, and Bjergsen coming in here with the Shen ultimate, wants to get aggressive, pocketing that goes such a good disengage ulti there from Smoothie. And when Impact comes in, if he could have just barely angled an R ultimate a little bit more to the right, he may have stunned double it. But they didn't even have the burst to follow up with that if it does land, because the fight is just so incredibly long. And it's fights like these where Vladimir is actually incredibly happy, and it's surprising that TSM couldn't win for more of this, because C9 is actually playing this quite well. Impact with the GA, keeping them at bay. Jensen actually ran out of mana throughout this fight, which is what ultimately meant C9 had to run back. Sneaky's low on mana as well. And they actually just ran out of resources in the duration of this brawl. Such a long fight. Really crazy one there, but Elder gonna be on the table soon. Looking for the play again. One Double second the impact on the front line. Here comes Smoothie. Going for the knockup. They might catch in. Yes, they do. Biofrost is down. Smoothie's gonna trade his life as well, though. Four versus four. No supports alive. No Guardian Angel for Meteos, whereas TSM still have two. Impact the Weaver's the Wall! Front. Weaver's Wall oh. catches up a couple. Now can they have the follow-up damage? A couple of stuns come in. They've got Bjergsen, and they shut him down with a 1600 damage. Can double get double blow. Medios, another knock of Trace's life, but it's done. Double lift. Gets the GA. They double kill you all. Kills everybody. They've got three. Impact goes down. And A's for TSM. Double lift turns around the fight. Staying alive. So much patience. Bides his time. And he takes over. And these death timers are massive. The wave they have in the bottom side might be able to end the series. So here they go. They've got... Four members alive, Biofrost just respawns. Here comes the play. Teleport is in, Haunter's joining them as three people. 30 seconds of the respawn timers. That might only be the inhibitor. The mini wave coming in just now. This will be tier two, and it looks like TSM will flinch and say that's okay. We'll tie up the golden back out. What a game, and what a fight that was from Jensen cutting off the team with his Weaver's Wall on Talia, but to double it, withstanding the harassment throughout the entire fight and understanding his ranges on the Lucian at the back end of that fight is not only going to give them their gold back, but it's also going to secure them a quadruple elemental Drake Elder. For the next two minutes, TSM cannot be trifled with. And with Baron on the now. table, that is a big deal. If Baron was off the map, you could say, okay, no problem, sit back, wave clear. That's not really an option for C9 if they want to contest this Baron. And if I'm trying to shock off for C9 right now, I don't think you can actually even go close to Baron. This Elemental Drake cannot be messed with. They're gonna get the wards off and hope for a pick, but if they ever see a lot of TSM people together, I think they have to run away. I agree, especially when you can take into consideration Vladimir, who can just dive backline, continuously apply this AoE true damage burn that's gonna do so much to your team. The question is, does C9 properly respect that? They have not been looking at this bot lane Keep in mind, Impact's teleport is up in eight seconds. He can try to split the team up and wait out the two minutes. This timer, it's already 45 seconds past. There's only 115 left for TSM to use this buff as they land little bits of poke, get that true damage burn across. C9 hoping they can waste enough time, but now TSM got priority in mid. They roam back over towards this Baron pit, looking at the play one more time. It's in vision of wards, but who they cares? They want to force it. C9 gonna have a hell of a time fighting him. Curtain call pops, and they're gonna go for this play. Weaver's Wall they're actually off the fighting. Thing. And there's a knockback. They've got impact, but he's Meganar, and he can't do it in time. The first kill comes in for TSM, and this could be the championship team fight. Here they go. A double already for Bjergsen into the back line. They're killing everybody. C9 only have two members remaining. Make that one. It's only Jensen. There's no chance left. And TSM find another fight at Baron. C9 did not want to give up that Baron, and TSM was so strong with the other Drake, they're gonna take that fight all the way to the championship. They didn't give up the Baron, but they're gonna give up the championship as the Nexus is surely gonna fall. And here we go, the ceremonial taking of the Nexus turrets. Nothing to stand in their way as TSM cement themselves as the most dominant organization in North American League of Legends and win their fourth North American Championship. An incredible moment for these guys. You can see just how much it means to them. Disappointment last year in Vegas and now finally victory is theirs and the fourth game was the closest of all of them. They really had to fight for that last game.
you're looking at Cloud9 right now, you can see the disappointment because they know they had some chances in that fourth game to force a game five. And now if they want to go to Worlds, they have to make it through the regional qualifier. Yeah, now it's either C9 or Immortals. Maybe it's like a baby, it's Envy, but those are the two you look at. And yes, TSM can rightly hoist that trophy as the top dogs of North America. Rookie Biofrost in his hometown in his first split says, I'm the best. It's got to feel amazing for Biofrost, and it might even feel better for the other four players on TSM who were one team fight away of hoisting that trophy in the spring, but now it's theirs in four games. This is a team people are talking about. This is the best ever North American team we have seen. Punch their ticket to world's first seed. They will get their chance to prove just how good they are against the world's best. Double if two, you could see front and center right there. Also becomes the first player to win North America on two different teams. Biggest news of the offseason was double if going from COG to TSM. He couldn't take down COG in spring. He did in the summer, and he also wins the championship. And now you see the smiles, the support staff, the men behind the camera for TSM. Of course, yes, the heartbreak for Cloud9. They know this was a winnable series, but it was a team effort. You know, you must regroup. I don't know if I have ever seen Jensen more distraught than in this moment. And I can imagine he is just replaying those team fights over and over and over again. But he played a hell of a series. He did. And the crowd respecting that, giving Jensen a tremendous round of applause there. But it was a series of inches, and sometimes it's the smallest plays that decide yep. these games. And it was. And C9, as we said, must regroup their season is not over. They've, oh, they've come back from worse. Last year, they were the seventh place team. They tie broke to <laughs> took seventh place and then went all through the regional qualifier, reverse swept two of those series, yeah. and then made it to Worlds anyway. Sadly, they got reverse swept in the group stage the other way around at Worlds, but now they come in as uh, a team we know is strong, a team that has basically beaten everyone they're about to come up against in the regional qualifier. They wait for Liquid versus Envy. Okay, that's probably not yeah. too hard. Then they take on Immortals again, assuming they win. They just beat last week, and you figure, Cloud9's got to come into this feeling good. They certainly have a, a chance to beat Immortals, but that was not an easy series by it. any means, and it took a, a Herculean effort from Impact, who played out of his mind in that series, and now, you know, it's Immortals who win third place. They're rejuvenated. They know they have another shot at these guys for redemption. Yeah, and we actually know a lot more about the way the world champion is going to look now. TSM is the number one seed, COG is the number two seed, and we know how competitive these playoffs were. The five-game yeah. series we saw yesterday, the four nearly five-game series we just saw here in the finals, it's going to be incredibly exciting. And TSM themselves have to be extremely excited about the team they put together and the journey they're about to take going towards the World Championship. It's going to be a whole bunch of fun to watch all the League of Legends as it unfolds throughout the rest of the year. But now we're going to hear from the whole team in just a moment. First, though, we're going to check with Zyrene for his initial reactions from the North American all-LCS kill leader, Double Lift. Thank you very much, gentlemen. North America, your 2016 Summer Split Champions, TSM! Now, Double Lift, it's been a year since you've been able to put your hands on that trophy. How does it feel to finally be able to hoist it up once again? Oh, man, when... Um... I still stand by this one. The first time I won in Season 5 Madison Square Garden was like probably the best day of my life. And then losing narrowly in the finals last split, I just, uh, I think this was just like redemption for us or, and for me. And everybody cheering in here. It's been an absolutely incredible atmosphere in the Air Canada Centre here in Toronto. What has it been like? playing in front of this crowd and winning a championship here. Dude, this crowd is nuts. Like, I've not made so many mistakes on stage. Like, I'm not going to blame the crowd, but, like, you guys are so hypey, man. Like, I cancel my gym. Final question for you, Double Lift. You guys already punched a ticket to Worlds, but you just stamped it. First seed for North America. 
you will be representing us at the World Championship in that Pool A. How far does this TSM go? I could not have been prouder of my teammates. Like, everyone stepped up to the plate when it really mattered. Like, I'm super proud to be able to represent NA. I'm really happy that I was able to play in Canada, which was, like, in a long time coming to have an eSports event. And I'm just going to do you guys proud at Worlds. Well, congratulations, Double Lift, once again. Your 2016 Summer Split Champions, TSM. And we're gonna have an interview with the rest of the team in just a few minutes, but to close out the series, we're gonna throw it back to the casters. Thank you very much, Zyrene. Excellent, excellent interview on the day for you. But now, we talk about TSM and how well they played, and, you know, I think every single person pitched in very heavily at certain moments. Mm -hmm. You had some consistent performers, you had some outstanding performers. There's a player that, honestly, I think, deserves player of the game here for consistently playing amazingly, and that is our jungler, Svenskar. Yeah, player of the series for Svenskar, and we have, it's a very hard decision that we made here, but we feel like he gave so many advantages to TSM throughout this entire series that it's well-deserved. The playoff buff for Sven Skarin, so to speak, and yeah. he made it work. He played fearlessly the entire time, always getting the edge over Medios in these games, getting aggressive, taking away his camps, getting vision for the team, and making plays when it mattered. Yeah, honestly, just, just like crushing it, it made Medios look completely outclassed. His score lines by comparison, meteorically better here. You know, Sven played just incredible League of Legends, he got his lanes ahead, he found those ganks that tilt the matchups a lot of the time, and, you know, in a match where you were seeing TSM get solo killed, or getting killed without any jungle intervention, Svenskaren comes to the next few games and goes, not, not gonna happen on my watch, pops people up, makes them all happen, and I think just did so much work. Yeah, you think about the way some of these games turned around, like, game two, very early on, Svenskaren gets a kill for... For Bjergsen, Bjergsen. Jensen in the mid lane. Yeah. And then the game four mind game, when they start at red buff so they can punish Jensen when he's going for Raptors, yeah. was such a tone setter in what turned out to be an incredibly close game, but was the clincher for the championship. Yeah, you imagine if Vlad didn't start out 2-0, and 4-0, and zero, this game looks very, very different, but TSM had all the Drakes and the Elder afterwards because of all the early pressure. Thanks, Ben Skarin, for making that one happen. So, a beautiful series for TSM. And now, for another perspective on that series, let's head back into Pastry Time, who's standing by with Cloud9 support. Hey guys, I'm here with Smoothie of Cloud9. First of all, thank you so much for joining me after obviously a tough loss there for you guys. An incredibly competitive series, despite the scoreline. What happened? I don't know. We basically just underestimated some champions. We didn't play against a lot of, like, Cassiopeia, for example. And, I don't know, Bjergsen just played really well. And TSM in general played really well this series. Well, I have to say, you guys have had an incredible season as well. And you, of course, being a new player into the LCS, you've had an amazing season to start things off at Cloud9. What have you thought of your play throughout the season? Because from what we can see, it's been incredible. Um... Well, thanks for you to say that, but I don't know. It's always just a journey, like, to imp like who improves most and... Like, this time I just won, I guess, and I don't know. It's been a long journey, and my team has taught me so much. Like, before I joined C9, I had no direction. I didn't, like, didn't really know like, how to play the game or anything, but I don't know. It's just been pretty awesome being on C9, and I wouldn't want to be anywhere else. Like you said, that journey will be a little longer now for Cloud9. You'll have to play in that gauntlet. Worlds obviously will be a dream, I'm sure, for you, and the rest of your team would love to get back there. For those who have been there before, do you think you can do it? Can you pull through the gauntlet and be the last North American team to represent at Worlds? Yeah, I think C9, we're really strong, and we're gonna keep improving for the gauntlet, and we're gonna make it to Worlds, I guarantee it. Well, before we go, we've heard the crowd already. We know it's your home country here in Canada. How has it been to play in front of your fans? And do you have anything to say to them? Because they have a lot to say to you. Uh, being in Canada is a great honor. I haven't been back to Canada in like a year since I started playing competitive. So it just feels really, really good to be back here. And I miss everything about it.
Well, Smoothie, thank you so much again for joining me. It's been great to hear from you. But we are going to look to close out the day. Let's go back to Rip and the rest of TSM.